Hello, an unmanned flying vehicle, a drone or a quadcopter. This is the thing now. Xiaomi have decided to keep up with the thing and announced their own quadcopter about a half a year ago, it's called simply Xiaomi Mi Drone or UAV, the unmanned aerial vehicle. Today I've got my hands on it. My name is Dmitro Voloshin, let's fly. The drone has two modifications right from the beginning, the Full HD version and the 4K version. The camera modules are different, the remote range is different, and the stripes on the remote and the camera are different. The 4K version has the golden lines throughout the body, and the Full HD version, the silver ones. The 4K version's range is 2 km, while the Full HD version range is limited to 1 km. The cameras are substantially different though, the difference is purely internal, visually they are identical. They have different sensors and different logic boards, 4K version can shoot up to 4K 30fps, the Full HD version can shoot Full HD of up to 60 frames per second. The Full HD version is the version I've got. The following review is going to be about this version. Beside the quadcopter itself, there is a good looking remote that looks like a console gamepad, a 50 watt power brick that is essentially the same as a laptop charger, two sets of propellers with which Xiaomi are especially proud, four rounded security bumpers for propellers so that the propellers don't get broken or don't cut something if drone accidentally collides with something. It takes two hours to charge the battery, which weighs exactly the same as the whole remaining drone itself. The remote has a built-in adjustable smartphone holder. It will fit even the largest smartphones out there, but even the smallest tablets will not fit. The white cable to connect the remote to the phone is included into the package. It is necessary to connect the phone app to the remote and then via the remote to the quadcopter. The quadcopter can be flown without the smartphone though. What it cannot do is fly or rather take off indoors or where there is no reliable GPS signal. The drone legs can tilt outwards for easy transportation. It is very convenient, the drone becomes almost flat and you don't even have to unscrew the propellers. Additionally, the form of the quadcopter is not square, but rather rectangular, so there are a few ways to put it into a bag or backpack. The screwdriver to mount the security propeller bumpers is also included. The quadcopter is turned on by one short press followed by a long press of a red button located on the battery. Here you also can immediately see the remaining charge of the battery. On the bottom front of the quadcopter there is a mounting for the supplied camera. Also here is the second camera pinhole lens. It is used for the photographic positioning of the drone as it hovers over some surface. This way it can hover much more stably and also move much more precisely and steadily. Right next to that there are two ultrasonic sensors that determine the distance to the surface beneath the quadcopter and its relief. On the four edges, right under the engines, there are built-in lights, two bright white LEDs on the front and one red and one green LEDs on the back. This helps to both clearly see the drone at night or when the light is dim, and also to tell its direction to steer and control it properly. The drone looks stylish and cool, there are no extra unneeded details or elements. Propellers are white but have the twist locking nuts of two different colors, orange and silver. They have to be mounted onto the appropriate engines. There are matching arrow-shaped markers next to the engines. Now, the important stuff, the way the thing actually flies and shoots. You can take off manually or by pressing a button in the app. In the first case, you have to move both control skills inwards and down. Then the engines start up at idle and you can take off manually by controlling the throttle. The second case, well, you just press the button and drone carefully takes off and hovers at about 2 meters. In any case, the drone will hover on one spot if no controls are touched at all. This is its default state. And to do this, the drone uses all possible devices. The GPS GLONASS receiver, the bottom camera, the ultrasonic sensors, the gyroscope and the accelerometer. All this allows the drone to hover steadily on one spot. Even during the gusts of wind, it compensates for it. The manual says that you can fly it into the winds of up to 10 meters per second. I tried to fly it into a much stronger wind and Quadcopter was coping with it no problem. The maximum horizontal or flight speed is 65 km per hour or 18 meters per second, which is very good. Maximum climb is 6 meters per second, descent is 1.5 meters per second. And while so fast, the quadcopter is actually very nimble and sensitive to the controls. When flying rather calmly, it is specified that battery will last for 27 minutes. When flown actively with the camera attached and shooting, you will get approximately 20 minutes of flight and footage. This is totally on par with the modern market leaders, let alone for a company's first try. The landing can also be done manually or automatically throughout the menus. In the first case, you just force the drone to the ground with the throttle stick, then shut off the engines in the same way as they were started. 
In the second case, you press a menu button and drone slowly lands on the spot right below it at the moment in time. You also get a function of landing at home. It can be turned on with a switch on the remote. Then the drone will return to the exact point where it previously took off. The same thing happens when the drone loses connection with the remote or when the battery goes below 25%. The camera is a ball-shaped thing, looks quite futuristic. It has a recording indicator and an indicator for the Wi-Fi connection with the drone. The video signal is passed through the drone and the remote, and only then it reaches the smartphone. This allows for the mentioned 2km operating distance. The camera is built into a 3-axis gimbal, which is then connected to the drone through a vibration-absorbing platform with four flexible rubber feet. This eliminates the vibration from the drone body, and the 3-axis gimbal not only stabilizes the shot, but also keeps the frame of the shot exactly the the same, independent of the drone's movement. So the maneuvers of the drone, even the most fierce, do not tilt or skew the video in any way. The gimbal also allows the camera to look up and down and a bit to the sides. The copter's feet don't get into the shot during this at all, and the propellers or the propeller guards might get into the frame only during the most extreme maneuvers. The video quality is on par with the modern action cameras at 30fps and a bit more artifact heavy at 60fps. The low light performance again is on par with modern action cameras. The aperture of the glass lens is 2.8 and the focal distance is about 18 mm or 104 degrees wide, which is noticeably wider than Phantom 4. You can start and stop recording and turn the camera up and down right from the remote. The camera turns sideways together with the drone's body. The remote, it has the on-off switch, the automatic takeoff and landing button, free flight or automatic return to home mode switch, two main thumb control sticks, two wheels under the index fingers, the left one is for the camera up and down movement, and the right is for controlling camera's exposure and the onboard LED brightness. On the back of the remote, right under the middle fingers, there are buttons to start-stop the video recording and a dedicated photograph button. The remote's battery is charged using a simple micro-USB cable and also charges the connected phone. The built-in battery is a whooping 5 5000 mAh. Its 4 LED charge indicator is also placed on the face of the remote. The left stick on the remote controls the drone's throttle, or ascent or descent, and also the drone's yaw, or rotation, left or right. This consequentially rotates the camera view as well. The right stick controls the drone's tilt, left to right and front to back. The stick responsiveness and precision is very high. They allow for a very smooth movement and for insane maneuvers when required for video, for example. You can make photographs while shooting video, but they will be essentially Full HD screenshots of the video currently being captured. When the video is not being recorded, the photographs are taken at 12 megapixels and look very, very good. Here is a small compilation of what I was able to capture with no flying experience or skills at doing that kind of stuff. The video and photographs taken by the drone are magical. It is a real feeling of flight with which nothing can really compete and very interesting and unusual angles for shooting video and photos. By the way, you don't have to just use it as an eye in the sky by just looking down from it from extreme heights. You can use it as a video crane or jib. With a little practice you will be able to mimic them with ease and get the interesting cinematic shots. Or you can just hold it and get cool stabilized footage as if you were using a gimbal. The operator looks rather funny then, but who cares. This was Dmitro Voloshin and Xiaomi's first drone, the Xiaomi Mi Drone. See you!